Chapter 2. Give me your knife. Methuselah's time. Location. Plains of Avonland. Adama. First dimension. With much explaining, several insurances of full inclusion on the next hunt, sealed with a blood oath made by swearing on top of the pack containing Enoch's scrolls, Methuselah was able to convince Tafara that they must return to the city of Seth first, before going on to the city of Nod for Nema's remembrance ceremony. Praise the light! He had felt particularly led by the ancient father as he persuaded his impetuous cousin. Yes, Tafara, I do realize the urgency, the urgency, but of course we must return home first with the news of Enoch's disappearance. Would you not want to be made aware of the bearer's absence immediately? Just think of dear Medici Adna. My mother would even be more distraught if we delayed. And what of your own father? Elder Seth and the council will most definitely want to send out a team and the council will most definitely want to send out a team of trackers to search for the bearer. No, you know very well they will not just take our word for it, as Enoch often communes with the Ancient One for many sun sleeps, yet always returns. They must be told immediately, of course we will not stay more than one sun sleep and naturally healthily at Moon's Peak if anyone tries to detain us. Yes, you most certainly may have the dagger now and on my honor as soon as we get back to the city of Seth, I will inform the trackers that you will be joining us on the next occasion into the woods of Avonland. Well, sure, I could understand how you would want something more substantial my word. Methuselah massaged the palm of his hand where Tafara pricked it, sealing their agreement. For truth, at least that is settled, he muttered. Methuselah retraced his steps making sure he left nothing behind. Tafara, he called out. I'm going to gather a few healing plants I saw by the rivers. If we leave at Sun's Peak, we will still make it before light falls. This be no day for plant collecting. We must leave quickly if we are to have enough time to commune with the council and travel to the city of Nod before next Sun's Peak. Tafara swiftly stuffed her sack full of provisions. A lot of cakes, ground ketu, her knife, a rack full of provisions. A lot of cakes, ground ketu, her knife, a rope, her bow and quivers, her short dagger, a few smooth stones, her sling, her new dagger, a gift from Methuselah, and cinched the bag shut. She then slung her favorite bow across her back, stuffed more quivers into her belt, loaded her sack onto the one fluid motion. Hurry, Methuselah, Tafara urged, waving a hand behind her. Hurry, we must leave at once. A woman could waste away in the deserts of the Southlands waiting on you. Coming, dear aunt, said Methuselah with syrupy sweetness, knowing Tafara hated it when he called her aunt. She was only his elder by a couple. He swung his father's cloak around his shoulders and dropped the plants into his sack. We do not have to be there by a certain shade. If we arrive by sun's sleep, we will have missed nothing. Besides, it's not as if Nama's going somewhere. Her rite of passing will take many shades. As soon as Methuselah uttered the words, he regretted them, seeing the them seeing the pained expression cross Tafara's normally cheerful pale eyes. Tafara rolled her eyes. Perhaps if Nema had been a daughter of Seth, you would show more concern. Enoch would have left right away to offer comfort, even though Father Lamech be our enemy most times. Tafara dug her heels into the fore. Let us be going now. Methuselah winced at her comment, but said nothing when his original intention came to mind. After he had the nightmare about Nema, he had planned to go to the city of Nod right away, but somehow the urgency vanished with the rising of the sun. Tafara's right. My father would have already made the rising of the sun. Tafara's right. My father would have already made the trip home and been halfway to the city of Nod by now. Methuselah grunted as he hoisted himself onto his forerunner. He pressed his heels into the beast and leaned forward. Soon he was just a span behind Tafara. I suppose the truth flows, but maintaining her gallop for a while. Finally, she looked over her shoulder and grinned. Only if you race me. First one to the Seven Hills wins. Yeah! Tafara shouted, surging forward before Methuselah could respond. Methuselah's time. Location, Seti of Nod, Adama. Location, Seti of Nod, Adama. First dimension. Tubalcane hovered over the lifeless figure laying on the stone pedestal. Flowers of every size and sort adorned it. Little wooden dishes along with favorite things from Nema's days as a childling surrounded her.
Someone had even brought a platter of fresh alighted cakes and, and fruit and placed it by her side, as if she would somehow arise and eat them. Silly fools. Nothing can help Nama now, and it is all my doing. Tubal Cain remembered how he had rushed to the Elohim Amazarak and begged him to heal his sister. He had even offered his life in exchange. Amazarak in exchange. Amazarak's answer still stung. I am not the most high. My remedies only work while there is yet life in the blood. Tears streamed down to Bukane's face, infuriating him even more. I will not, I will not, I will not cry. Father Lamech will slap the foolishness out. Tubal Cain knelt beside the stone table, gripped its edge, and wept. Ah, where's your pride, my boy? Father Lamech entered the room, pushing the door open so hard it hit the wall behind it and bounced. I will be cursed to Sheol before I shed a tear. Get up. Show the strength of Adama. His father, I... Tubal Cain jumped up. I was just paying my respects. You were just playing the fool, and I will not tolerate weakness, not now... There is much at stake. But, Father, do you not feel anything for Nema? She is your daughter. How can you? Tubal Cain paused when he saw the thunderous who. Tubal Cain paused when he saw the thunderous glare in Lamech's eyes. He was used to his father's anger. But there was something else there. Fear. Lamech was afraid. Father, what is the matter? What is wrong? Not here. Lamech motioned for him to follow. We must speak privately. Tubal Cain followed his father down the winding trail from the wooden dwellings of the divine towards the familiar tent on the outer edges of Nod. Finally, Lamech entered the plain tent of a Sabasi and quickly pulled the folds shut behind them. Why are we in a Sabasi's tent? asked Tubal Cain. Why are we in a Sabasi's tent? asked Tubal Cain. Because Simjaza and his men never come down to the Sabasi quarters. It is beneath the Benai Elohim, Father Lemek said, mimicking Captain Simjaza's tone as he grabbed a mantra stone and lit the fire pit in the center of the room, flanked through the hole at the top of the domed roof. Ah, that is better. Tubal Cain waited. He had never seen Father Lamech nervous. Have you seen the childling, my son? Father Lamech asked. Well, I've only thought about Nema, said Tubal Cain, and... Mother, she is beside herself babbling and crying. No one, no one has been able to get a sensible word out of her. So I went to see a Mesrek to see if there was something he could. Have you seen the childling? Lamech asked again, slower this time. No. Tubal Cain paused. I tried. I wanted to take the childling to Mother Zilla to bring her comfort, but Simjaz and his men said her comfort, but Simjaz and his men said the little one was resting and could not be disturbed. I was going to ask again, but Enoch showed up at the seat of honor in El Tava and caused that big commotion with the watchers. The Elohim have all been in such a temper since then, I did not have the chance. Have you? No. But I have heard strange things from the Sabasi but I have heard strange things from the Sabasi who tend the homes of the divine. They say there is something wrong with the little one. Well, what is wrong? Is he sick? said Tubal Cain. Do you think that is what Enoch was telling the watchers that night at El Tava? By Adama's blood, I would give anything to know what he said. The tongue he used was not familiar to me, would not know those words, but I believe it was the tongue of the Ancient One. I once heard Father Adam use those sounds, Lamech grumbled. The Medici say there is power in them, but Father Adam refused to teach them or anyone else that tongue. Father Lamech threw another mantra rock into the pit, then set a pot full of the drink of power on the rack above it. have learned it from him. He's a sly one, wearing Father Adam's garment and using his tongue. Father Lamech's hands shook as he drew another whiff of his pipe. Made my blood boil. But at least he put that some jaws in his place with all his gallivanting about giving orders here and there. Why, he has not even delivered on his part of the oath. About giving orders here and there. Why, he has not even delivered on his part of the oath. My Nama lies dead as a stone, birthing his child, and he has yet to show us how to subdue metal proper. But, Father, I do know how to, Tubal Cain interrupted. I, it made my heart smile to see the grills of the Benai Elohim and all his men crumpled on the steps of El Tava, even if that fool Enoch was the one to do it, Lamet continued, talking over his son. It should have been you. Why did not the strength of Cain put those Elohim in their place, eh, boy? Tubal Cain looked down. 
Fool, fool, fool. Why did you not stop some Jaza? Now Nama's dead. His eyes missed it. He felt the droplets form. I will not cry. I will not cry. I will not cry. Boy, this is no time to cry, barked Father Lamech. We have to see this childling for ourselves before it is too late. I am no weakling, Father. It is merely the smoke from your pipe that to the steaming drink of power. He straightened his shoulders and continued. Father, if the childling is sick, we should leave it in the hands of the Medici and Sabasi. Surely they know how best to care for an ailing little one. He took a long drink. The fiery liquid burned its way down to his gut. Tubalcane stood up and stared down his father. That Tubalcane stood up and stared down his father. This is your fault. If the childling dies too, I do not know how mother will cope with your decision. I was hoping Nama's son would help ease her sorrow. Boy, I do not give a coal from the depths of Sheol about how your mother feels about my disorder as I please. Or did you forget I have another wife to suit my needs, said Lamech. And if what the Sabasi say is true, this childling will only bring grief, so sit down. Tubalcane remained standing. Father, your own sorrow is speaking. How can this little one be anything but... Father, your own sorrow is speaking. How can this little one be anything but a joy? Tubalcane, that is the problem. He is not little. Well, of course he has his father's nature. The yellow and are tall. The boy will grow to the stature of Samjaza. Tell me, father, what else do the Sabasi say? Does he have the light of the yellow, said Lamech? With trembling fingers, he raised the pipe to his mouth, drew in deeply, and puffed smoke into the air above. That is impossible, Tubalcain said, waving smoke from his face. He is only one son sleep old. The Sabasi have no reason to speak falsehoods. And they say the boy does not have a child of a childling's nature, said Father Lamech, rising to his feet to face his son. Already he is walking, talking, and cunning in just one son's sleep. The Sabasi have been commanded by some Jaws and his men to say nothing. Now sit down. How did you find out? asked Tubal Khan, lowering himself to the floor. Uh, lowering himself to the floor. The Sabasi are loyal to me, no matter how afraid they are of Samjaza. What does this mean? It means we must act before Samjaza puts his foot on our throats. Methuselah's time, location, Seti of time, location, Seti of Nod, Adama, first dimension. Delmar sat motionless, becoming strong, solid, dull. He thought of the figurine. He diminished, becoming smaller, harder, wooden. Onami is going to pay for this one. Though Onami sent me here because of my skills in camouflage. But this is ridiculous. The guardian Elohim Delmar had been watching the childling while blending in very nicely into the ornate wall coverings in Captain Simjaza's chambers when Lucifer appeared. With his abilities, the high-ranking Satan, high Satan would certainly perceive the presence of a loyal. Why did I panic? Without a thought, Delmar had reduced himself into the small figurine the childling made. Now I'm stuck. He willed himself to absolute stillness while the great leader of the Furious Ones, exa Furious Ones examined the carving. Finally, Lucifer returned the figurine to the shelf and began to speak. Interesting. Not what I expected, but interesting, said Lucifer absently, as he lost interest in the carving and focused on the childling. Well, he is... Well, he is a rather good little artist, isn't he? Azazel remarked as he studied the young boy whittling away at the wood block. A sleek form began to appear as slivers of wood fell into a growing pile on the floor. I was referring to the boy, commented Lucifer, and I must say he is rather large. He smiled and gave him a proper name. He laughed, but I see we're quite beyond that. Some Jaza coughed and looked out the window. Azazel took the carving from the boy and whistled, Not bad, not bad, my lad. Not as good as me, of course, but a fine start. He set the human-like wooden figurine with wooden figurine with outstretched wings onto the table. Relax, relax, my dear captain, said the great leader, motioning Simjaza to sit at the table. This is a most pleasant surprise. Does he catch on to everything this quickly?
Yes, said Simjaza. He has surpassed the expectations of human childlings his age, not expectations of human childlings his age, not only in size, but in intelligence, too. Well, I can't say I'm surprised, said Lucifer. This is just another treachery of the beloved revealed. He knew we would have superior offspring and withheld this privilege from us. Didn't I tell you so, Simjaza? Yes, my lord, agreed Simjaza. It's yes, my lord, agreed Simjaza. It's just so hard to believe and to think I have been loyal to the beloved and even defended him against you. I, I just can't believe it. I told you I spoke the truth. I never would have risked the lives of the Elohim if I had not been sure of it. I am just saddened that only one third of you believe on back into its rightful position under my leadership. Now, let's talk numbers. How many of the wives of the Elohim are expecting? Great leader, excuse me, interjected Azazel. If I could but mention one small item before we move into the details. Some Jaza glared at him. Of course, by all means, Lu of course, by all means, Lucifer responded. If you feel it is important, I want to hear of it immediately. The boy does consume a great deal of food, he said. Just look at him. The boy sat in the corner of the far side of the room, noisily chewing on a skewer of cooked, fle skewer of cooked flesh. Uncle Azazel, he called out when he noticed them staring. May I have more? Certainly, just ring for us a bossy and they will bring more, said Azazel. He paused for a moment and then added, Little one, please take your things into the other room. You may work on another carving there. Do you remember the form there? Do you remember the forming trick I taught you this morning? Yes, uncle, he said. I practice it and bring you another toy. The little one's eyes beamed with pride. Perfect. That's my boy, replied Azazel. Well, Azazel, you certainly do have a way with childlings, the great leader commented. You know, Simmented, you know, Simjaza, you really should work on your parenting skills. Simjaza said nothing. Azazel smirked. Now don't be cross, Simjaza. All of this keeping of the childling has established a bond between me and the boy. Who knew he would age so rapidly? In just one day, I've practically paused when he heard three soft taps on the door. Enter, said Simjaza curtly. A Sabasi pushed the door open, carrying a heavy platter piled high with food of all sorts. The great leader immediately diminished himself so as not to be seen. Delmar cringed inside the wooden figure as Lucifer camouflaged before able to perceive him in this state. He willed himself to stillness, not even daring to breathe. Why did Anami send me alone? The air stank of deceit. Delmar ignored the dizziness he felt and forced himself to focus on their conversation. He is in his room, said Simjaza. Please tend to the conversation. He is in his room, said Simjaza. Please tend to the boy's needs and leave out the back entrance when you are done. Yes, my lord. She headed quickly toward the childling's quarters. I do see your point, Azazel, replied Lucifer, reappearing after the woman left. That spread would feed several human men, yet the left. That spread would feed several human men, yet the boy is still lean. Apparently, said Simjaza, he has inherited our superior physique, but not our control. He does have need of food where we do not. Apparently, said the great leader. He stood and began to pace the room. And just how I am quite certain they do, said Lucifer. No, no, once Azazel and I noticed his growth rate, we have been the only ones tending to him. The great leader raised his brow and motioned towards the childling's quarters. And what of the woman who just entered? Oh, that's just Yabasheth, said Simjaza. She has been ordered to keep quiet. She is terrified of what will keep quiet. She is terrified of what will happen to her daughter Shalal if she doesn't. She has already been demoted from a Medici healing woman to a mere Sabasi because of her big mouth. She wouldn't dare disobey us. So you've threatened her, have you, said the great leader? Naturally, we had to ensure privacy in this matter. We told Yabasheth we matter. We told Yabasheth we would make her daughter Anuta to be used at our disposal if she spoke one word about the childling, added Azazel. The other wives are expecting and with Nema's death fresh on everyone's minds, we don't want the women to become afraid and do something rash. No, we most certainly can't have that. That's unacceptable. Azazel and Samjaza said nothing. Lucifer paced around the room in slow circles. 
In the future, I would expect two senior officers of the Benai Elohim to foresee such matters and plan appropriately before there is a problem. Azazel and Subjaza said nothing. Nevertheless, said, nevertheless, said Lucifer, swinging around to face them. They relaxed when they saw a hint of pleasure on his perfect features. That is why we must proceed with my plan post haste, said the great leader. The form of Nema must be revived and we don't have much time. How in second heaven can we revive Nema? She's... Azazel dropped his head into his hands. Simjaza bristled at the great leader's icy stare and quickly added, Lucifer, my apologies for interrupting, but I simply did not realize it was possible to bring the soul back to its human form once the silver cord had been broken. How much time do we have? Much better, Simjaza said the... Much better, Simjaza said the great leader. I do hate to be underestimated. He continued... Yes, that's what I thought too until I discovered some information hidden from us in the, in the archives of the Ancient One. Samjaza and Azazel looked at each other, each willing the other to be silent. They knew the mention of the powers of the, the, mention of the, powers of the Ancient One would set Lucifer in a mood. The great leader muttered and ranted for several minutes, but they could make out a few bits of information. After the Beloved's prophecy in the garden, really, they're just... Veiled threats from an insecure person who knows he is unqualified to reside on the throne forever. I to reside on the throne forever. I just had to investigate. I researched my copies of the scrolls I managed to smuggle out before. Well, at first, I just wanted to experiment. I just needed to know the depths of his betrayal to see if it was true. That's when I realized it was possible for us to exercise this power. Of course, we must have the right ingredients essence. The combination of that plus innocent blood plus performing the ritual before three days time this should produce the expected excuse me sir interjected azazel did you say we only have three days to do this nama's soul has already departed for one full day that means we only have two days left that means we only have two days left simjaza glared at azazel lucifer glared at azazel finally lucifer said very good, Azazel. Yes, three minus one is two. You are correct. And since you are both so intelligent, you should have no. You are both so intelligent, you should have no problem obtaining the elements needed and meeting me back here within two days' time for Nema's revival. He swung away from them and strode towards the door, then turned back once more. Oh, and make sure the entire tribe of Cain is present for the ceremony. After this demonstration. No one will attempt no one will attempt to do anything rash towards any daughter carrying an Elohim seed now or in the future. The great leader vanished before they could respond. And just how are we going to get our hands on the garment of Father Adam or Mother Eve? Alan will be in search of the garments, no doubt. I have to get word to Anami. Delmar hated to admit it, but Anami had made a good call. The beloved was right to promote him instead of me. Delmar analyzed the situation. If more guardians had been sent, their presence would have been detected. If more guardians had been sent, their presence would have been detected. By sending only one, the smallest one, Delmar thought ruefully. I went unnoticed. The story of my life, Delmar felt every fiber of his being tingle. I will not succumb to Satan's confusion. He refocused his mind. I for a purpose the beloved uses even the small to confound the wise. Surely the favor of the ancient one be upon me, Delmar chuckled, borrowing the human expression. Now, to get out of this wood and send word to Meet me at seventeen zero four point sixteen point thirty three, a familiar voice intoned. A familiar voice intoned. Anami? Delmar swung around, searching for his friend. He slid back into the wall coverings to remain unseen. Where are you? Come quickly to the court. 